Dhritarashtra was blind from birth, but his blindness in committing impious activities to support his dishonest sons was a greater blindness than his physical lack of eyesight. The physical lack of sight does not bar one from spiritual progress. But when one is blind spiritually, even though physically fit, that blindness is dangerously detrimental to the progressive path of human life. Om Yamaraj had to come, he got cursed, and he came 
as we do it. So he is a saintly person. Yamaraj is a saintly man. He's a one of the Mahajans. And we do it was saintly. But Dhritarashtra could not accept the good instructions given to him by the Dura. Why? Because he was blind. I mean, you know, we get people like that. You try to tell them, you know, this is not right. You know, you shouldn't do that. You know, you shouldn't eat this. You shouldn't drink this. You shouldn't. We tell them so many different things, you know, which are not very good. But somehow, people don't, they don't take good instruction. They don't take good instruction. They, they're blind. Or you could say <laughs> they're dead or something, but they're blind in the sense that they cannot see the problem. They cannot see that something is wrong. If you tell them, you know, you know, this is not very good that you're doing this, they don't think, what's wrong? What do you mean it's not good? Everybody does it. They say like that. You know, they say, you know it's not very good that you eat beef, Prabhu. You, you eat beef? Oh, you know, that's a cow. The cow is a sacred animal. Oh, everybody does it. Everybody. Look, big burgers, big signs everywhere. People are eating burgers, big burgers. You're telling me not to eat? Everybody else is eating. Why I shouldn't eat? They don't see the problem. They don't see the danger. They don't see anything is wrong. They're blind. So, this was the condition of Dhritarashtra. In Ishopanishad, Ishopanishad talks about the killer of the soul. The killer of the soul, whoever he may be, will enter into the darkest regions of ignorance. People who don't see the truth, they're killing the soul. The soul, of course, the soul is eternal. The soul is spiritual. So that they don't actually kill the soul, but they deny the real business, the, the, the real nature of the soul. And by acting in a sinful way, by acting according to their bad habits, they're causing the soul to go into hell to enter into the darkest regions of people. That is the position. The unfortunate people. Dhritarashtra was blind physically and he was blind spiritually. He could not see the, the, anything wrong in his sons. And even when his sons are trying to kill the Pandavas, Dhritarashtra is thinking, it's okay, they're good boys. Just like they got this one criminal, one murderer in America. He murdered 30 odd people. And, you know, he was taken to a god death sentence. So they talked to his mother and they said to him, you know, you're the mother of your son. What do you think about what he's done? And the wife, the mother said, Oh, my son, you know, he's such a nice boy. The mother said, My son, he's such a nice boy. But he killed 30 other people. No, but he's my son. He's nice. See, that is the blindness. That is the nature of family attachment. We're so we're blinded by it. And we're blinded by the material energy. When we see people do things, we think everyone does it. There's nothing wrong. Everybody's eating the beef. Everybody's smoking the drugs. Everybody's drinking beer. Whatever it is they drink. They're all doing things. And we think, it's okay. 
candy, nothing wrong. We don't realize that we're killing the soul because the nature of the soul is spirit. And the spirit soul actually wants to connect to the Supreme Spirit. The Supreme Spirit is Lord Sri Krishna. He is the Supreme Spiritual Being. We have to connect to Him. But in order to connect to Him, we have to follow the rules and principles of civilized life. Now, there are principles of religion. Lord Krishna comes to this world to establish religion. We, we call it Dharma. And Dharma is, the, is in the Vedas described to be like a bull. The bull stands on four legs. You know, the male cow, the bull. So the bull is on four legs. And the four legs represent the four pillars of religion. There are four pillars, just like you can see the pillars here in this building. We have pillars to hold up the building. So we have pillars to hold up society, to hold up civilization. You have to have proper culture. The culture means there is religion. Human beings have religion. Animals don't have religion. That is the difference between human and animals. Animals eat, we also eat. You may say, oh no, no, no. We, we go to Lucky. Lucky is next door place. You see, what's it called? Lucky Palace. Huh? Lucky Palace. Lucky Palace. They go to Lucky Palace and, the, and and the animal, the dog is eating the garbage or the pig is eating the, the waste. But the same business, you're filling the belly, taking food put in the belly. So animals eat, the humans eat. Animals sleep. The animal, the dog sleeps in the street. And the humans there have gone to their home and they have a bed or something, they lay down and sleep. It's the same business. Close the eyes and take a rest. The animals are doing the same thing. Mating. Animals are also mating. They're having their children. They're producing their offspring. Just like the humans are defending. The human is also defending. They've got their dog to guard, or they've got their big fence around the house, or they've got their cameras, maybe they've got CCTV to watch who's coming to disturb me. The dog or the other animals, they defend in their own way. They bite, they've got their teeth, they've got their claws. But it's the same business, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. The animals are doing that, and the human who only do that, they are just an animal. They're not really human. They are called Dvipada Pashu, two-legged animals. What happened to the microphone? Huh? Why not? Oh, you have to have an iPhone. Do you have an iPhone? I don't understand why you couldn't connect. You couldn't come on your phone. Anyway, do we buy that pasha? Two legged animal. That's it's not civilized. The pillars of religion, four legs. Satyam Sucham Daya Tapa. Satyam, truthfulness. Very rare. People are not very truthful today. We know politicians especially, right? 
politicians in Malaysia haven't got a very good name today. Not very truthful. They're very rich, but not very truthful. So, truthfulness is very important. We try to train people, train children, be truthful, don't tell lies. We go to court, you should tell the truth. And people take the oath, I swear, to tell the truth. But still people lie. People not very truthful, not very honest. But it's a principle of religion. Where people should be truthful. And then, satyam socham, socham, cleanliness. People should keep clean internally as well as externally. Not only taking bath, changing the dress, but cleaning the heart, cleaning the mind and the heart by avoiding things like intoxication. The more people intoxicate, then the more they become polluted, contaminated. And then daya means mercy. Mercy is destroyed when people eat animals, when they kill other living entities. They're killing the animals, the birds, the fish, eat anything. So that destroys the quality of mercy. And tapa austerity. Tapa austerity. People don't want to be austere. Everybody wants luxury. They want to enjoy comforts. If they come to temple, oh, have to sit on the floor. Oh, <laughs> not very comfortable. They feel difficulty. Right? So they're not very accustomed to do tapa, to do austerity. But austerities are good for us. They purify us. And, but the more we're proud, the less we will like to do austerity. So pride, pride is bad for us. We want to be humble, to develop humility. Not to be proud, but to be humble. These things are taught in civilized society. Truthfulness, cleanliness, mercy, and austerity. These are the four pillars of religion. So Dhritarashtra is very proud and is very attached to his son. He's, he's, he was envious of he was envious of his brother because Dhritarashtra was the oldest son. But because he was blind, they said, cannot be the king. So the second, the, the number two brother became the king, Pandu. So Dhritarashtra, that was, you know, he got neglected because he's blind. Although he was born in the royal family, he could not be the king. So the king, the throne went to Pandu, but then Pandu died. He died when his children were very young. So when Pandu died and the, his sons were still young, the young children couldn't be the king. So Dhritarashtra had to become the king although he was blind. So Dhritarashtra became the king and he wanted his sons to get the throne after him, especially his number one son, Duryodhana. And Duryodhana is really a fast, nasty person. He's really bad. You know, he's got a lot of envy and a lot of hate for the Pandavas. So this is the background, this is the conflict which is going on. But Dhritarashtra has a problem that because he's blind physically and 
spiritually. Actually, spiritual, Prabhupada says spiritual blindness is worse than being physically blind. Some people can be blind, but they can be great devotees. Just like there was a Bhubha Mangal Thakur. Bhubha Mangal Thakur was blind. He plucked out his own eyes, but he was a great devotee. So you, you get people who, they can be blind. They say Sur, Surdas, Surdas. He was blind. There was, this, there was a saint called Surdas. He was blind, but he used to sing poetry, right? He used to sing poems, and people would write them down, and he became a great saint. But he was blind. But it didn't stop him being a great devotee. But Dhritarashtra is blind physically and is blind also spiritually. He cannot see the wrong in what he is doing. He cannot see the harm in how he is treating the Pandavas. He's only thinking about his family. This is the bodily conception of life, the body. The, the, the most important thing we have to understand in this Krishna conscious philosophy is that we are not the body. Prabhupada calls this attachment to the body skin disease. Skin disease, you know? You get, you get a problem with the skin and you want to scratch it, we did try to cure it by skin. doesn't cure it, makes it worse. So, the, the, because we're attached to the body, we're attached to the skin, it brings us so many troubles, so many difficulties. We have to transcend we have to transcend the bodily concept of life. We have to understand we are not the body. And we are not, we don't belong to the particular family or country or like that. We are all spiritual beings. We want to get rid of envy and all this hatred which we have for others. You have to see the, the Lord, Lord, the Lord is in the heart of all living entities. Before Lord Krishna departed from this world, he gave instructions to Uddhava. And he was telling Uddhava, you have to see how I am in the hearts of all living entities. That's the Paramatma. Right? Sarvashya Kaham. Really, Sunny Visto, Krishna said, I am in the heart of all living entities. So the Lord is in everyone's heart. We have to see the Lord in the heart of everyone. And we have to see not only in the people, even in the dogs, even in the animals, in the plants, in the trees. You have to see the Lord is there in the heart of all living entities. And we should even go and bow down to them. Bow down to the dog. <laughs> you know, at least in our mind, we should offer respect. In that way, when we do that, you get rid of the envy. You get rid of that hate which is there, that we're keeping in the heart. That envy, that hate for others, that is the demonic quality. And that is what we have to remove. So, Asura can become Sura. There, there are two natures. There's the divine and the demoniac. Daivi Sampat means divine qualities. And Asuric Sampat means demonic quality. So, Dhritarashtra has the demonic Quality. He has to. He has to change. He has to give them up. So, if you've read the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, you read about how Vidura came back to Dhritarashtra 
at the end of Dhritarashtra's life. All of Dhritarashtra's sons had all died. They'd all died in the Kurukshetra war. So Dhritarashtra had a hundred sons and every one of them was killed. And Dhritarashtra is still here. Because he's blind, he cannot go to fight. And what is he doing? He's living in the home of the Pandavas. And he's eating their food. Although they killed his sons, he's living there and eating their food. So Vidura says to him, you're such a fool. <laughs> he, Vidura tells him, he said, you know, look at you. You're, from birth you are blind. He said, now your body is old. You're, you cannot see, you, cannot, you could never see. Now you cannot hear hardly. The hearing goes with old age. Your hearing becomes weaker. The senses are no longer so powerful, difficult to remember things in old age. The memory becomes weak. Different things happen with aging in the body. The digestion is not there. When you're a young man, you can eat good, but in old age, you don't, you cannot eat so much. Prabhupada used to say, Srila Prabhupada used to say, young man cannot eat too much. Old man cannot eat too little. You see? So I did, young men, we give them more, eat more, take more. They can grow, they can digest it, they can, they're energetic. But in old age, oh, I'm tired. You don't have the energy the same. You're not so fit because the body's old. So Dhritarashtra was aging and he was still living in the palace, eating the food there. And Vidura came. And Vidura talked to him and he told him, you have to get out. You have to go out of the house. You have to go and get ready for the next life. How to prepare for the next life? You have to take shelter of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. You have to hear and chant about Lord Krishna and prepare for the next life because very soon you have to give up the body so when we see other people die then we think more about it just like Lord Krishna arranged for all the Yadu dynasty to be to annihilate each other they fought with each other and they killed each other Millions of them, Krishna's family members, the Yadu dynasty, they fought and killed each other. Why? Krishna wants everyone to see the nature of the material world. That this world is a place of birth and death. Everyone's going to die. Now, the Yadu dynasty they were all great souls. So when they died, they all went back to heaven or went back to the spiritual world. But what about us? Where are we going to go? You know, when we die, we're not the great souls. We're not Mahatmas. Where are we going to go? We have to prepare ourselves. So preparation is to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam and to chant the holy name and to follow the principles of religion, to be clean, to be austere, to be truthful and to be merciful. Very important for everyone in human society to follow these kind of principles. Civilized people will follow regular principles. 
But just following regulated principles is not enough. You have to chant the holy name. And you have to hear about Krishna. You have to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. Then your life can change. So Dhritarashtra, poor soul, he was blind in every way. But blind people can be cured. Spiritual blindness can be overcome. How? Well, we say, Oma Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. But the, the spiritual teacher opens our eyes. He makes us see the truth with the light of knowledge. He gives us the torchlight of knowledge. All right, we are Adhyana, we're in ignorance, we're in darkness. Ignorance is like darkness. In the absence of the sun, there's no light. So in the same way, in ignorance, there's no light. Krishna Surya Sam, Krishna is like the sun. Maya Haya Andhika, Maya is the dark. Yahan Krishna Tahannahi, Wherever there is Krishna, there can be no darkness. As soon as you put on the light, the darkness is gone. But as soon as the light goes out, the darkness is there. As soon as there's no Krishna, immediately the, the Maya comes, the darkness. So there has to be that consciousness of Krishna. You have to chant the name, the holy name. You have to hear about Krishna. You have to read these books to help us to remember Krishna. Krishna consciousness is within us, but it has to be awakened. We have to awaken that consciousness. By chanting, we say Jeev Jago. We were singing the song this morning. Jeev Jago, wake up, sleeping soul. The soul is asleep. When you're asleep, you don't see anything. Right? Eyes look, you're in darkness. We have to open the eyes. Gora Chandra Jeev Jago Gora Chandra Boli Kota Nidra Katamai Pisa Chira Lord Chaitanya is calling us open our eyes and see the light. All right, any question? Every, everyone seeing the light? Hmm? We need to we need to call loudly. Malika Mataji, any question? Do you understand what I'm saying? Malika Mataji told me yesterday she was talking to me. She had a daughter, a young daughter, and she was successful. She was a. Uh, what was it she was doing? What was her job? What that? I forget that. Um, Yeah. Uh, physical therapy. Mm -hmm. huh? 
She is a physiotherapist. She passed away. Yeah, she was a physiotherapist. So she was a young woman. But she was driving the car and she had accident. Suddenly left the body. And so Mataji thinks more now about life. And it's a warning to us that we also have to get ready. We will have to take birth again. Where are we going to take birth? The consciousness which we have in this life will determine where we take the next birth. Yam yam bapismaram bavam shajiti anti kalevaram. Whatever we remember at the end of life, next you'll come into that situation. Right? Somebody may have a big factory, and the end of life is thinking, my factory, he will take birth as a mouse or a rat in the factory. Right? become some kind of vermin living in the factory. He may not get the human life, but he is attached to the factory and he has to come back like that, like some rat living in the factory. Before he was the owner of the factory, now he's a rat living in the factory. That's the law of nature, the law of karma, is like that. We cannot avoid these things. So we have to prepare ourselves. This human life is very precious, it's very rare to get the human life. And it's even more rare to get association with devotees. Because we need that association to encourage us and to guide us in our hearing and chanting in our spiritual practice. Without that association, then it's very difficult. If there was no Krishna consciousness movement, then where would you, maybe you would go to the Kali temple and then the Kali temple they kill the goat every month and you go there and you see the people you kill the goat, you drink the blood and they say this is, this is Vedic, this is the scripture but that is the Tamagun that is not pure it's influenced by the mode of ignorance. So that kind of atmosphere, then you think, oh, this, this is religion. Killing the animal, cutting the throat of the animal and drinking the blood. They're thinking, this is religion. Chinese New Year, people are setting off the fireworks, so many fireworks, keep the ghosts away. At the same time, drinking alcohol, eating meat, and all kinds of animal flesh. And so the ghosts are coming anyway, because you've got all this tamasic, all this food, which is tamasic, which is the moon of ignorance. So it just brings so many evil influences. So we have to learn what is actually the proper standard. People have to be educated. And education means you have to study, you have to study books like this. Srimad Bhagavatam. And we can learn. Okay? All right, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.